So you sold an option, specifically a put, and the underlying goes against you. And you're saying to yourself, what do I do now? Really common strategy that's wildly misunderstood is that of rolling options. This video is a crash course in rolling options, what it is, what it isn't. So we have an example here in Apple, and let's say that you started selling puts somewhere in here when it was 220, it goes against you. You don't want to get assigned just yet. There is a strategy you can use to avoid assignment while keeping the trade open so that hopefully you can continue managing it, continuing to keep the idea alive until you can get out, ideally, at a profit. Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, what's up, everyone? My name is Eric. I'm from Outlier Trading. I am not affiliated with Bar Chart directly. I don't work for them. And none of this should be taken as investment advice. This is all just information for you to add to your toolkit. Okay, so let's start with this idea of a role. What is a role? Well, first we start by selling an option. It can be a put, it can be a call. This is the most common configuration. However, you can roll a bought option as well. We will talk about that. So the concept is you start by selling an option. In this example, I'm using a put. Then at some point, you close that option for some reason. And again, you can close it because it's in profit and you're capturing the profit and adjusting your trade. Or it could be that it's not in profit, it's in a loss and you're looking to manage the trade. Colloquially speaking, most of the time when you hear somebody talk about rolling an option, it is in the context of having a short option that is going against them. That's the underlying assumption. But again, it's not inherently the case always. So we sold a put, buy to close the put. This looks like a standard trade. Then we sell to open another put. So if we think about what's happened here, you've opened your trade. You've closed your trade and you open a new one. So where did the roll occur here? Right there. That's it. That's all it is. So a couple of things that rolling is not magic. It does not avoid losses. It's really commonly misunderstood to think to avoid losses. It's the exact opposite because here's what happens in the trade. You sell to open this position. You get a credit. Then the trade does whatever it does. And in this case, you're going to close it for a debit. And then you're going to ideally open up the new trade for a credit. Now, some people will say, well, Eric, as long as you open this new trade for a net credit, you didn't lose. Incorrect. You still realize the loss if you close this option for a loss. And I'll show you an actual example here. So let's say you sell to open a put and you collect $2. So what just happened here is you have an unrealized gain of 200 bucks. This is sitting in your cash and sweep, meaning you have the money in your account. However, it's still tied to an open trade. So your net lick, your net liquidating value will move based on how this trade performs. So then let's say that the option goes against you and you choose to buy to close this option for $3. So now here's what just happened. You originally took in $200. You just closed this trade for $300. This is a realized $100 loss. Now the concept of rolling for a net credit, which fun fact, you don't always have to roll for a net credit in order for the trade to ultimately work out. And I'll show you how that works. This realized loss of $100, the idea is that it will be overwhelmed by this new trade. So we sold to open this one for two bucks. You can see that here. We bought to close this one for three bucks. So then the idea for the roll is that you would now sell to open this new trade, call it for $3.50. So now what just happened is you collected another 350 bucks. And if you 
net these out, you have now an unrealized gain net profit of 250 bucks. This is the concept of rolling. Now, it gets completely perverted when people think that this, again, is avoiding losses because it doesn't. You are quite literally realizing a loss and opening a new trade that has an unrealized P&L that might be able to overwhelm the realized loss that you took earlier. But you, that doesn't make the realized loss go away. It is there. The other thing is there's this misconception that you can roll forever and you can't. And it's for a few reasons. What happens with your account value, let's say you have a $1,000 account. What's happened so far? Well, your $1,000 account lost $100 here. So you take 900 bucks out of that. I'm sorry, you take 100 bucks, you get $900 remaining. So you're minus 100. I'm going up so that my head doesn't cover it, by the way. So now you're at 900 bucks. So what happens when you take in this new credit of 350 bucks? That doesn't increase your net lick. Your net lick is tied to the open trade. So your net lick is the same. It's 900 bucks, but your cash and sweep will show your now 350 bucks that you just took in from this trade over here. So what ends up happening is if you continue this process long enough and you don't get an accommodating move, you can see the problem. Even if you're rolling for a credit, that credit is going to hit your cash and sweep. It doesn't increase your net lick until you realize the P&L or until the trade moves in your favor. Then you see it in your net lick, but you literally can run out of money doing this. Now, it's an extreme example. As long as you have a decent size account and you're not making terrible rolls, you shouldn't run out of money, but you can, and you should know that you can because people will frame it as if you cannot, and you can. So it's just important to understand the nuances of how this thing works. So now I told you a little bit earlier that... There are examples where you don't have to roll for a net credit. And I want to show you what that means and how it works. We're going to use the same exact example of selling for two bucks, three bucks, and then we'll take a look at the rest. So let's clear all that off. So here you're going to sell to open again for the $2, which is 200 bucks. We're going to close again for three bucks. which is a $300 debit. So here again, we have that very same realized loss of $100. Now, the idea of rolling for a net credit is the idea that you need to collect more on this trade in order for it to be for a net credit. But it's not always the case, and I'll show you. So let's say instead we don't collect $3. Let's say instead we collect 250 on this new trade. So we're going to open this new trade for 250. This is a net debit between these two. This shows you at a $3 closing cost, a 250 credit to open. This is a 50 cent debit. But what actually happened under the hood here? Notice how if we net these out, you're still positive 150. So what I'm showing you is that all there is to accounting for rolling options is literally to just track what comes in, what goes out. It's that simple. It's literally that simple. It sounds like wizardry when you see it because most people are always told you need a net credit. Well, you don't on this part of the trade, but you do need to make sure that between this part of the trade and this part of the trade is a net credit. That absolutely has to happen. But it very often gets mistaken between this part of the trade, which is not the case. So let's now take a look at one other circumstance with this idea of rolling and where you can go because there are really a few main ways you can roll. The first one that's really common 
is to roll out. That means if you look at a time series, and let's say this is where your trade is, actually let's draw it to kind of scale. So if we draw a time series, this is where this first trade sits. So let's say that this is 10 DTE or whatever. And this is when you choose to close it. There was 10 days left and you can roll out in time. And now when you sell this new put, maybe this is now 60 DTE. This is the idea of rolling out. You can roll up or down. And it depends on which way you move your strike. That's all. So, for example, if we take a look at an options chain, the way that you, it's literally out is referring to time, how far out in time you go. Up or down refers to the strike. Are you trying to move your strike out and up? Are you trying to move your strike out and down? You don't have to move your strike out. So say, for example, you sold a put and it's working in your favor. You can stay in the same expiration and just roll it up to regain your deltas, that sort of stuff. Now, the other thing is you can really, there's no rules. So the way to think about out or in realistically, because you can go either way with time, is it just refers to which way in time are you moving your trade? Out or in? In is less common, but you can do it. Up or down refers to the strike. So the last thing I want to show you quickly is there are really, really simple ways to make this easy, and you literally can build your own little worksheet like this. I'll zoom in on it to make it a little easier for you to see, but... All I'm doing here is creating a way to track this idea. So what I showed you is simulating, in no stock in particular, essentially moving a one lot that I sold to open for two bucks. I closed it for three bucks. And then in this example, I opened up another short put two points lower on the strike. So we moved from a 90 to an 88 and I collected $3.20. This takes what I refer to as the adjusted net credit. This is just a rolling tally of everything you've done so far. Again, money in, money out. And what we can do is actually calculate a premium target. So what I can say is, what do I need this new option to trade at in order to be at break even? Because a really common issue people will have is if you sell this for two, you buy this back for three, you lose your dollar, you sell this, for 320 and then you're like, oh wow, this option, let's say it's trading at 250. The option will show a profit at 250 because you sold it for 320. But that profit is not enough to overwhelm the PL in the trade. We now literally can calculate what we need the option to trade at. And in this case, it's two dollars and twenty cents. How do we get to that? All we do is we Calculate our adjusted net credit, which again is just the rolling tally. And then we take the price of our option divided by the number of contracts. That tells us exactly what we need in order to get to our break even point. So in this case, again, you can see you're literally just taking your adjusted net credit by the lots. That's all you have to do. And then you now know exactly what your short put in this case needs to trade at. So rolling options is a really useful tool. There's nothing magic. It doesn't avoid losses, but that doesn't mean it's not an effective tool. If you have an issue with the fact that it realizes losses and you don't like that idea, it means you have loss aversion. You have another problem. It means you don't like losing trades, which, I mean, none of us love it, but it's part of trading. So if it bothers you that much, you have another problem to work on. Just because it realizes losses, though, doesn't mean it's not useful. It's incredibly useful. I, I literally roll options all the time. This is the tip of the iceberg. If you want us to do a follow-up and go deeper into detail on some of the advanced management tactics, things like how to think about adjusting your strike, expiration liquidity, things like 
managing dynamic lot sizes, all of that we can talk about in another video. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Be an outlier. See y'all later.